So I think now we get the idea of drop down list. So now let's do another form function in an interactive PDF. So if we go to the next activity, it asks students which sentence has the correct punctuation and it gives a list of four options where one of them is the correct one. So a simple multiple choice question. What we're going to do now is we're going to insert radio buttons to the left hand side of each sentence which then allows students to only select one of them. Okay, so radio button, very similar as before, we click on insert, click on standard and radio button should appear. But because my screen is quite small and you can't see it, I'm going to go into the different menu which is my favourites and as you can see radio button is here as well. So you select this, this will give you a radio button, what we have to do is just drag it to the correct space, which is here, just shrink it a little bit, so we don't need it to be that big, okay so now it's the correct size and it's aligned so that is right in the left hand side of the sentence. So unclick out of that and do the same thing as before and insert another radio button. Okay, see how these two buttons are grouped in a bigger blue border? It means that these two radio buttons are in the same group, so only one of these can be selected um, at any time. So unclick out of that and insert another radio button. And for our final one. making sure all of them are aligned. Just to test it out, click on Preview PDF. It's going to shrink it a bit so we can see. So we're at the bottom one. Okay, so if we test it out, you should only be able to select one button and not more than one at all. Okay, so that works. Let's do the next one. Where, do, where does the missing comma go? And the students have four choices where they can do it. So let's go back to design view and we'll put in radio buttons for that. Okay, so make sure it's unclicked. We go insert radio button. Let's align it. Unclick out of that. Insert radio button. Okay. See how once again these two radio buttons are sort of grouped together with a bigger light blue border? Once again this means that these two radio buttons are in the same group so only one of them can be selected in any one time. So insert again, radio button, insert, radio button. Okay, and just to test it out, we'll go to Preview PDF, and just to make sure that these two sets of radio buttons work. So by these ones, yep, it works, only one can be selected, and even when that's selected, I can still select these ones, but only one for this question, okay? So it's working all good at the moment. For the next question, it says, read the text cards. The spelling mistakes have been underlined. Write the correct spelling for each underlined word in the space. Okay, so we, what we're going to do is we're going to put some text boxes to the right of each sentence so that students can type in um, the incorrect misspelled word and type it in the correct spelling into these text boxes. So like before, we go to insert and we go to text field. Okay, so in the standard menu, because my screen is too small and you can't see where the text field is, I'm going to go to my favorites and there should be a text field in here. So I'm going to click on text field. Okay, so just resize it if you want to, to the size that you like. Okay, so once again, with the box selected, right click on it and go to palettes. 
Now you can't see the thing there, but we go to object, which will bring up the object window. Let's try that again. Yeah, so here's the object window. Now you can choose whatever you want. You can do sunken box again. You can do um, a solar box underlined. So this time I might leave it as a sunken box. Okay. If you need to have the students write a paragraph, then you can select allow multiple lines. If you want to limit their length to a particular amount of characters, you can do that. You could also limit the length of their writing to the visible area so that once the writing goes over the box, it won't let them um, keep writing, etc. Okay, so I'm not going to have either of those because, you know, they're only typing in one word. Okay, so that's fine. I'm going to right click on that but change the font of the color. So palettes again, but this time font. I'm going to leave it as Myriad Pro size 10, but I'm going to change the writing to blue. And once again, I'm going to change the paragraph so that the alignment is aligned in center and we'll close it. Okay, so let's just go to preview PDF just to check out what our worksheet looks like with that text box. Okay, so the engine of a car uses a chemical reaction called combustion. So kids can type in engine just to test it out. Okay, so that's fine. We can go back to design view and then we can do the same thing for each of these other sentences. So insert text field. Size it up so that is the same as before. Right click on the box, click on palettes, click on um, object, leave it a sunken box, right click again, palettes, font, we'll turn it to blue, and I'm going to change my paragraph to a light in the middle. Now let's go all the way back up the worksheet into where we had the um, name and date for students to write their name and date in. So of course the name will be a text field, but the date you can choose to put in a date field where when students click on the field, a calendar will pop up and they can select the date. So if we click on insert, click on standard, there should be a date time field. So select that. Okay, so it's got popped up in down the bottom of the worksheet. So let's drag it back up. Okay, where did my date field go? There it is. There we go. There's my date field there. Let's put it into there. And if I want to change any of the font, writing, etc., I right click on it. Palettes, select object, okay? So at the moment it will appear as a sunken box, okay, which is fine. I close it and let's see what it looks like by clicking on preview PDF. Okay, so if you click on here, it will give you a arrow and you can select whatever day it is. Okay, so today, August 29th, and they can write that in before they start the rest of the worksheet. The final thing we're gonna do now is to insert check boxes, so little um, boxes where you can click on it and it'll be a tick so that you know when you mark the kids work that's available for, the, um, for that to happen so let's say for example we want this sentence to be able to be ticked and this sentence to be able to be ticked okay so I'm gonna put go to insert standard and then go to a checkbox which is here Okay, so here's my checkbox. At the moment, it's quite small because if I go to preview, okay, so say the kids got, you know, the sun provides most of our Earth's light and heat, which is correct, you can then click here, okay, to click it. But at the moment, it's a quite a small box and is appearing as a cross. So we need to go back to design view and change a few things. So to change the properties of this, like before, we select it, the field, right click on it, Go to palettes and select object. Okay, so at the moment we've got a sunken square, which is fine, and we've got the options on and off, so it's either checked or unchecked. 
See how it's at the moment, it's size 10 point. I'm going to do size 40 point just to make it four times bigger. And the check style is set on default. And I'm going to click on check, which means a tick. Okay, so let's see how it shows up now. See how like a little red cross button has appeared? That means that at the moment, your check or your tick mark is too big and it won't fit on that screen. So what we do is we just extend the box until we don't see the check mark anymore. Okay, so now the red cross is gone. So that means it's the correct size. So let's go to preview to see what it looks like. Okay, let's say we're marking this worksheet. The student has got this correct. We can now tick it to say that they're correct.